Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. A few days ago, a student of mine asked me, can you tell me how to learn calculus? And that question immediately intrigued me. It took me to my childhood when I started learning calculus. And I used to ask my father, tell me in one line, <laughs> in two lines, what is calculus? Because I was so intrigued. I mean, I was in I was learning algebra, I was learning geometry and all those things I seemed to understand. But calculus seems like a very weird, different thing, a mysterious thing that only adults know. And he tried to explain a few things, but I, I could not understand that very well. Uh, so I understand that children are, you know, intrigued by the subject. And in this video, I will share with you a few things that can really help you to learn, really learn, really understand calculus. So uh, the first thing I would say that there are two parts of calculus. One is differential calculus, differential calculus, which involves extracting derivative of a function. I'll explain what that means in a second. But geometrically speaking, Suppose you have an xy coordinate plane and you have a curve like this, whatever the equation of the curve is, and you choose a point on the curve, let's say a point P, then what differential calculus does is gives you the, the tangent slope. So this is the tangent line at the point P. It gives you a way to calculate the tangent line at that particular point P. In fact, at every point P on the curve, wherever it is possible to draw a tangent line. It gives you the slope of the tangent line, how fast the tangent line is rising or how fast is it falling. That's what differential calculus is. And there is another part of calculus which is called integral calculus which again if I draw the same picture let's say I draw an xy plane I draw a curve like this then integral calculus gives me a way to calculate the area under the curve so that's it differential calculus gives you a way to calculate slope of a tangent line Differential cal integral calculus gives you a way to calculate the area under the curve. This is one way to think about it. And to be very honest, this is not how you should be thinking about calculus when you are starting with it. But if someone like me, who is like really naive, who is very rushed, that please tell me, please tell me what it is, what it is. So you say that, okay. So differential calculus, you calculate the slope of the tangent line at every point. Integral calculus, you calculate the area under the curve. And behold, they are actually the same thing. In a way, they are converse of each other. Each other. So like if you take the square root and if you take the square of the square root, the square root goes away. Similarly, if you take the derivative of the integral, then the integral goes away. So they are converses of each other. They nullify each other in some sense. So that what I just said is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is a very, very naive way of saying what is calculus. But that is not the purpose of this video. And to be very honest, this is not how you should be approaching the subject. So I will give you the way I think is most effective to approach the subject. Of course, there are two parts. I already talked about this differential and integral and they're developed separately. So it's better to approach them separately in the beginning. So I would suggest that you start with inequality. It's a very strange place to start if you if someone just talks about calculus 
you immediately don't think about inequalities but trust you me if you know how to handle inequalities really well then you will understand some of the basic philosophical transformations that calculus brought into the world of mathematics so how from where do you study in inequality my favorite is little mathematical library this is a very beautiful book we actually have a reprint of the book at chenda so if you want to purchase it for a very small cost i would say we just take the printing cost so you can check the link in the description i just want our kids to get a handle on this particular book learn how to understand inequalities really well there are different types of inequalities arithmetic mean geometric mean inequalities cauchy schwarz inequalities there are a ton of interesting results algebraic results one of the results which is very fundamental to the study of calculus is this if you take a sequence of numbers let me write the sequence if you take us take this particular sequence of numbers i have written some of the terms of this sequence something strange happens i have written the first four terms you can actually calculate them something strange this is an infinite sequence of course somewhere here there will be 1 by 2024 raised to the power 2024 like this this is an infinite sequence there is a very beautiful property of this sequence the property is this that all the terms of this sequence is less than 3 even if you plug in instead of 2024 if you plug in 2 million the number would be less than 3 that's the first property so it this is called bounded bounded means it's less than a certain finite number the second thing is that this is always increasing so uh, just it it keeps on increasing so if you if you plug in instead of 2024 if you plug in 2 million you will get a larger number so this is increasing and this is this is where the revolution is something that keeps on increasing and yet that is bounded it is increasing but it, it is bounded the greek mathematicians euclid archimedes they were greatest of all but somehow they could not wrap their head around this sort of sequences it seemed unreal to them the greeks were unable to figure out or really understand that a sequence of numbers can be increasing and yet bounded it keeps on increasing but it never goes it always increases but it never goes beyond a certain finite number this is something strange and this to prove that this sequence is bounded you have to use something called amgm inequality and that my friend you have to go and learn from this particular book and it increase and it in introduces you to such sequences which baffled the greek mathematicians for centuries and then aryabhatta came in in india and then madhavacharya came in around 12th century bc uh, ad sorry 12th century in the kerala school of mathematics and he literally i think was the first person who really understood what sort of things we are dealing with here in finite sequences increasing always increasing but bounded that is a story of a different video but as i mentioned this is the beginning of the idea of a limit if you understand what's happening here you understand what is a limit therefore it is important to understand inequalities
Therefore, I suggest that you go and get your hands on this particular book. You can also download a PDF copy online. It's freely available or you can purchase one. Okay. Next, once you have done this, I suggest you go to a very beautiful book by Tarasov. The name of this book is Calculus. The way Tarasov introduces the idea of limit and continuity is truly remarkable. It's like a conversation between a student and the teacher. And he uses a very interesting technique that was in, used by ancient Greek philosophers. This is known as dialectics. You can also read more about it. Mathematics and philosophy went hand in hand in ancient world. Tarasov is not that ancient, but he uses dialectics in his con conversation between a student and a teacher and out comes the definitions of limit, the understanding of limit, the understanding of continuity, all of that stuff. It's absolutely remarkable. So that is the second book I suggest you study Calculus by Tarasov. Even if you do not understand any calculus, you can start with this book. The third book that I would suggest is Single Variable Calculus by I. A. Marin. Single Variable Calculus. It's a very beautiful problem-driven book. Never read, never read big articles on some mathematical idea. Solve a problem that is always better. It's always more fun. It gets you inside the subject. And Marin in single variable calculus actually starts with a problem. There are a bunch of problems. And as you go through the problems, your understanding of the subject becomes even better. And finally, I would say there is a book called Art and Craft of Problem Solving by Paul Zietz. I think I'm writing the spelling incorrectly. Remember, I told you a few minutes ago that differential and integral calculus are like con converses of each other. Paul Zietz's book, Art and Craft of Problem Solving, has a beautiful chapter which geometrically makes you understand why this is the case, why these are converses of each other. So these are the four books that I would suggest. From the philosophical point of view, I would also suggest you to study Zeno's paradoxes. These are some of the most well-known paradox of the world. And if you want to understand this a little bit more, how it is connected with calculus, you can, you can Google it, of course. But once you read the paradox, you can think about it, how these paradoxes might be related to an infinite sequence, infinite sequence, sequence of numbers that is always increasing but bounded. It is always increasing but bounded. How Zeno's paradoxes are related to that? This is a fascinating part of ancient philosophy and I'm, I think that if you are studying mathematics, occasionally you should go back to philosophy and see what's going on there. Okay, so that's how I learned whatever calculus I have learned and gradually as I moved ahead of this learning process, I begin, began to appreciate basic geometry, how that comes into play, how basic algebra comes into play, how the advent of calculus allowed us to extend the binomial theorem to fractional powers. So suppose if I say 2 to the power 3, you immediately know it is 2 times 2 times 2. That has a meaning. But if I say 2 to the power 3.2, if you plug this in your calculator, you'll get an answer 
but you cannot multiply 2 with itself 3.2 times. That's not possible. So to even understand what's going on here, you have to use calculus. So I hope you would, uh, you would enjoy learning calculus. It's a very, very beautiful subject. And if you have any questions, put it in the comment section. And if you are interested in Olympiad pro uh, problem solving, student research, or similar programs, then check the link in the description. We have beautiful programs at Chanta. I'm sure you'll love them. All right, take care. Bye. Keep on doing great problems.